Hi everyone, it's Dr. Kamari Valentine here. Thank you so much for joining my podcast. Today, I thought I would talk about post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD and complex PTSD. So let's start by talking about what PTSD is. PTSD is a diagnostic label, a grouping of symptoms that can happen after somebody is exposed to a trauma or to a series of trauma. The trauma is threatening or the person's response is horror and fear or helplessness. It isn't a given that being exposed to trauma means that PTSD will happen. In in fact, it isn't um, a, a given. People who have been exposed may have symptoms immediately afterwards, and these symptoms can resolve or can resolve with support. However, for a proportion of people, and there are risk factors, PTSD can result. And when we're talking about PTSD, we're talking about a certain grouping of symptoms. We can diagnose PTSD using the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association or the ICD-10. Well, actually, it's now the ICD-11. And this ca- the, the words PTSD can be used synonymously with trauma, but they are aren't uh, they aren't about one and the same thing trauma can be a more broad description of effects that people have experienced or that people struggle with whereas PTSD refers to a very specific set of symptoms so according to DSM-5 the criteria are that somebody is exposed to a traumatic event or a series of events where the person feels helpless, threatened or in danger. Criteria B is about intrusions. That is, events coming to mind, images and flashbacks. A flashback is a sense that you are re-experiencing something as if you were back there again. You don't have to actually be there to get that sense that there you are. We, we can also call this a dissociative reaction. You may also have recurrent distressing dreams in which there is content or related content to what happened. There might be distress at things that remind you or that resemble an aspect of what happened. These cues may be internal, like experiences you have, or even sensations or movements that you make. And you might notice that you have physiological reactions, body reactions to internal or external cues. A simple example is getting upset when you pass by the place where something happened. Criterion C of PTSD is that there is avoidance of thinking about the trauma, uh, feeling aspects of the trauma, avoiding places, situations, conversations, anything that can cause distress or upsetting feelings. Criterion D often overlaps with symptoms relating to depression um, or problems with mood. And that is why people can regularly get misdiagnosed with depression. Or I'll speak uh, in a moment about complex PTSD or with bipolar disorder. It is really important to ask about the presence of trauma or to ask if somebody is experiencing 
effects relating to trauma. So criterion D are what we call these changes in mood and thinking associated with what has happened. There can be a difficulty remembering some aspect of what happened. There can be negative beliefs about oneself or the world or other people, such as believing that you are deeply defective or that other people can't be trusted, or that because of what's happened, you have permanently changed. People often blame themselves for what happened, and I see this a lot in working with people who are experiencing the effects of those negative events in childhood. In the absence of other information, children are likely to blame themselves and to believe that what happened was caused by them or in some way was their fault. People can also have a persistent state of feeling fear, horror, anger or other negative emotions including guilt or what I see a lot of is profound shame. People can also have less interest in doing things that were previously enjoyed and this can be a difficult matter to judge when the trauma or traumas have occurred early in life. People can also feel detached, different or fundamentally removed from other people. What people sometimes tell me is that what they have experienced seems outside the norm. It seems that most girls or boys wouldn't experience this. And they have a profound sense of being different from their classmates or colleagues or friends. It can also be hard to feel positive feelings. The nervous system is in such turmoil and in such a state of heightened anxiety that it is hard to have access to um, feelings of love, relaxation and so on. So the symptoms that overlap with depression are these negative feelings such as guilt and shame, decreased interest in doing everyday things, feeling very different uh, and um, disinter seemingly disinterested in engaging with other people or different from other people and this difficulty experiencing joy or love. Criterion E is these changes in, in physiological arousal, in that body reaction of fight, flight, freeze, flop and reactivity and this may be associated with the event beginning or worsening soon after the event. And by the way with the symptoms that I'm talking about you don't have to have experienced all of them in order to meet criteria for PTSD. So in this cluster we're talking about irritability and anger which are typically the reasons why people come uh, for therapy recklessness or seemingly self-destructive behavior, hypervigilance or being on guard, on alert, scanning for danger, being easily startled or jumpy, having difficulty with concentrating and having difficulties with sleep. And there is an overlap here with symptoms of ADHD and you may know that it is difficult to tease apart ADHD or ADD from um, PTSD. But there are some differences in profile and what is important is getting that sense of timeline. So typically these symptoms have been occurring for more than a month and they are immensely disruptive in areas of life and they cause distress. We can say that PTSD appears with dissociative symptoms. When we're saying dissociation, what we mean is that people 
are zoning out, being numb and not fully present. There are two types of dissociation that the DSM-5 notes. Depersonalization is feeling as if you were an outside observer of what's happening mentally or your body, feeling as if you were in a dream or feeling unreal. You have a sense of being out of your physical body. Derealization is where there is a sense of unreality, like the world seems dreamlike or foggy or far away. It may be that symptoms do not present immediately. They can be a time from when the trauma ended to when symptoms are seen. And this can have something to do with, for example, it not being safe, uh, somebody still being in that freeze reaction, or somebody repressing the memory or parts of the memory. And there can be a multitude of other reasons. But I've already started hinting at what happens when trauma or traumas occur early on in life, or there are multiple experiences of trauma. So complex PTSD is a disorder that that is currently um, in the appendices of the DSM-5. That is, a, it's not a um, it's not a diagnosis that has been. Um, uh, that is readily used, but it is in the ICD-11. So it is a disorder that can develop following the exposure to things that are extremely threatening or repetitive. And the ICD-11 stresses where escape is difficult or it is actually impossible. For example, when people are the survivors of childhood abuse, whether that is sexual or physical, or people have experienced prolonged interpartner violence or domestic violence, these are situations where it is difficult or impossible to escape. In order for a diagnosis of complex PTSD, the diagnostic criteria that I outlined for PTSD have to be met. Okay, so those intrusive thoughts occurring in those different ways, um, avoidance, those alterations in mood and cognition, as well as those changes in reactivity and arousal. And in addition, Complex PTSD is associated with problems in, in regulating emotions. So that is, that is probably the symptom people notice the most, that it is really hard to manage feelings and that, that becoming angry or be, becoming upset or overwhelmed can happen so fast and it can take a while to come back down from that feeling. Number two are issues of seeing oneself as worthless or defective and those profound feelings of shame or guilt or failure relating to what happened and the ideas that people developed about themselves. And three, difficulties in managing or keeping relationships and in keeping close to others. And this, of course, causes significant trouble in all sorts of areas of functioning, like one's personal functioning or academic or social functioning. The way I describe complex PTSD is to talk about the building of a house. And this house is you with the the bricks or the... the um, scaffolding describing the achievement of psychological milestones. So in the same way as we have physical milestones like walking, talking, um, um, 
for using full sentences, we also have psychological milestones. These milestones can include feeling safe in the world, a really fundamental milestone. Trusting ourselves, knowing that no means no, being able to have a sense of autonomy, developing our identity, regulating emotions, and so on. We aren't born with these skills. We develop them. And the experiences that we have that scaffold these experiences, that, that scaffold um, these skills are really important. But imagine that in building this house, trauma knocks out some bricks in the wall or knocks out part of the floorboard or knocks out part of the roof. You still continue to grow. Time passes, but you've missed out on developing some age-appropriate or stage-appropriate skills. The good news is that these are skills you can develop. Something that has stayed with me that I heard is that trauma, or PTSD I should say, is an injury. It describes a reaction to something that happened. And what I would like you to know is that PTSD and complex PTSD are treatable. Your brain encountered danger, legitimate danger. The switch was turned on to say, hey, this is a dangerous situation. I'm, I'm not okay. The problem is that switch continues to be on. Okay. That amygdala, that part of the brain that, that signals that we're in danger, was alerted and it continues to alert you because it wants to keep you safe. What we have to help the brain know is that now is different from then, a, a concept it struggles with, and that now you're safe. Now is not then. Okay, so I feel like there is just so much more I can talk about PTSD and PTSD, but I hope this brief overview was useful and I would love to hear what you think and whether you have any questions about, uh, about either or related concepts. So thank you so much for listening and I will catch you next time. Take care.